Now, the unprecedented economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, together with school closures, is pushing children into exploitative and dangerous child labour. Human Rights Watch says that the situation is exacerbated even more by inadequate government assistance. In a report released ahead of the World Day Against Child Labour next month, Human Rights Watch is calling on governments and donors to prioritise cash allowances to poor families. The organisation says that these are crucial to protect children's rights and enable families to maintain an adequate standard of living without resorting to child labour. The 69-page report called I Must Work to Eat, COVID-19, Poverty and Child Labour was undertaken in Ghana, Nepal and Uganda. It's a collaborative work with, the, uh, it, with uh, Uganda and Ghana researchers examined the rise in child labour and poverty during the COVID-19 pandemic and pandemic's impact on children's rights. Well, to discuss this issue further, we're now joined uh, by the Natural Resources Governance Coordinator of Friends of the Nation, Solomon Kusi Ampofo from the Ghanaian city of Takoradi. Thanks very much indeed for joining us on the programme. Akwaba. Yeah, thank you very much, um, Akwaba, and happy to be here. All right, so um, tell us about the research and uh, the things that you found. Yes, yeah, so um, if the research was done in three major locations in Ghana, um, consisting of uh, mining and, and fishing communities. And uh, the key things that we found during the research was that um, when the pandemic um, struck and, and, cool, and schools were closed, most of the children that we interviewed who were um, um, under 17 years were forced to go to work to be able to support their families um, because um, of the pandemic. Because the pandemic has caused um, the local uh, economies of these um, cities to, to dwindle. Um, major restrictions uh, imposed by government has also uh, affected um, people going to markets, going to shops, people's uh, buying, and that also affected the incomes of, of the parents and also the guardians of um, these um, children. So these children uh, had no option than to go and work um, in fish markets and also in mine sites mm. to be able to get extra income to support their families. Which other areas um, are they working in uh, that are of concern to you? I mean, the fact that they're young is already a problem, but there is a fear that some of them might even be exposed to dangerous environments. Yes, so um, some of the miners, uh, some of the children uh, were working in mine processing sites where they are exposed to the, to the toxic chemical and, and mercury which is very injurious uh, to their health. For some of them, they were also uh, working at fish landing sites and also fish markets, where they were carrying heavy loads of goods to, from the fish landing sites to the markets. And that also uh, exposes them to a lot of danger and also having a burden um, on um, their health. So. Uh, the children who are also working in mines, there are some of them that we interacted were also working in underground mines, which also um, exposes them to the fumes um, that um, arises from these underground mines. And also, even at the processing sites, they were also uh, exposed to dust uh, and also uh, fumes from the uh, machinery that were used at these processing sites. I mean, the tragedy of this is that their childhood is taken away, uh, education suffers. Um, uh, what sort of psychological impact does something like this have, child labour? Yes, yeah, so uh, if you look at some of the children that um, we, we, we interviewed, uh, for some of them, um, those schools have re reopened. Um, they, they still don't have the edge of, of going to school because they have been exposed 
to money at an early age and that they prefer um, to be uh, working and, and attaining extra incomes. For some of them, they, they were still waiting to get enough money to be able to support the education in terms of um, buying bicycles to travel to, to schools and also books and, and uniforms that, that they can wear in school. So these were some of the, of the challenges that um, some of the children were facing. And it also has um, a, a psychological effect. So for example, in some of the children that we interviewed uh, at the mine side, at uh, the uh, fishing side, some of them were, were saying that they, they can earn um, as low as less than a dollar in a day. And sometimes even some of the goods that they are carrying, which uh, are very heavy, uh, they don't get paid for those skills that um, they, were, they were carrying. And this also have a psychological um, impact on them as well. What are the authorities in Ghana saying about this? They obviously are aware that this is what's playing out. Is it against the law for children to be working? Yes, um, in Ghana, um, it is um, against um, uh, our um constitution and also our children uh, act bans the working of children of age under 15. so children below the ages of 15 are not supposed to work and children below the age of 18 are not also to be exposed to hazardous work so um, these are things that um the, the children's uh, act and also the constitution of ghana uh, France upon, but um, as I said, because the, the, the pandemic stroke and that um, um, families have lost jobs, the local economy uh, has also dwindled, these children were forced to work to, to be able to, supply, uh, to supplement the incomes of their families. Uh, typically, how, how many hours a day do some of these children have to work? Yeah, so we found out that during the pandemic, when schools were closed, um, the children could work, uh, the working hours was between eight and, and, and 12 hours wow. um, that they could work. But um, when, when schools reopened and most of them returned to school, then that reduced for about three to five hours. But you realize that during weekends, the, though they are in school, but during the, the weekends of Saturday and Sunday, they go back to work and that's um, they work on uh, average for about eight hours in a day during the weekends. All right. I mean, these, this study was done in a, a certain number of countries, but I would imagine we can safely say that this perhaps is uh, something that's typical across the continent. Yes, um, I think it's also across the continent and also uh, other areas where um, they are poor and, and low um, living or low income um, living people um, in these um, um, areas. And, uh, and that is why we, we are calling um, on the government to be able to strengthen their social protection systems and also provide uh, better um, protection for families of low uh, income brackets by providing direct cash transfers to support these families um, in these hard times. All right, that's where we'll leave it. Thank you very, very much indeed for joining us uh, on the program and uh, bringing this very important issue uh, to the fore. Thanks for your time, uh, Mr. Ampofo.